Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Anyone found creepy things whilst out? I'm not saying you found Bigfoot, but any other out of the ordinary encounters you've stumbled across? One time, me and my mate were walking around in a big abandoned prison near where we used to live, which was out in the middle of the woods, and we kind of heard some shuffling. We weren't in an area where we had any good shot at hiding, so we decided we'd just take it on the nose and pay our trespassing ticket or whatever. But it turned out it was not the cops. It was a fella with a camouflage jacket on and a couple trash bags. We sat and talked to him for a while, and he told us about his flawless setup for hunting deer out of season and not paying for tags, which involved catching the trash bags and a kid's wagon in the ruins and then coming out to hunt when the deer started coming through, using bullets low velocity enough to not alert anyone who lived nearby and using the wagon so that there wasn't a blood trail and parking a couple miles down from the place people usually trespass from, etc. He was really nice. We chatted for a while, we went our separate ways, and then on the way back to the car, it occurred to us that he had also just described to us a perfect setup for committing serial murder. A bit creepy for a younger me. We moved to a lot on the edge of our small rural town when I was 12 or so. Not many houses back then, I eventually started exploring the unsettled area on our north, which had a huge dry wash and nice trees and bushes, wildlife, odd wildcat trash dumping, a nice place to walk and explore trails for hours with our doggos who loved sniffing out everything, occasionally chasing rabbits who always got away but always fun. There was areas I found with lots of broken pottery and flake stone for arrowheads that would become visas after rainy seasons. I got really good at reading the ground, tracking animals and what plants and trees were useful, and also identifying what seemed like ancient pre-Columbian sites and villages. Once just walking around then sitting under a tree to rest, I started just digging with my hand gently in the dirt. I found the edge of a pot a few inches down. I kept at it and pulled out a round platter about a foot in circumference, intact and painted. It was a bird or eagle or like thunderbird all in the center area. It had colors of clay paints, red, white, green, blue, black and orange. The most beautiful thing I had seen. All pottery I saw was always shattered and scattered, mostly plain redware, rarely designed. I sat there a long time holding the piece looking and looking it over. I was told to be careful taking things because the old spirits, ghosts, what have you. So I walked about 20 feet away and sort of stashed it in a small shrub. Walked home an hour and told my mom, we are tribal. I said it was an extremely rare thing and should I bring it back? She said sometimes the spirits will show you something because you earned it. Sometimes give you a special power or something, or an item, a gift. It's possible and it happens to many who go out way out there. I went back that same day and I went back out to the place. I tracked myself where I sat and my steps around the area and found nothing. I walked around looking for other human tracks who might have come after I left four hours earlier. Nothing. I know it was the place. I got goosebumps and said, okay enough, I'm going back. Told my mom and she said, maybe the ghost just wanted me to see and receive the thing, but I didn't get to keep it. They returned it back. All I have is the memory now. I still tromp around out there, but farther and farther when I get a chance. A friend told me his great uncle said the traditional way of finding something powerful was to hold on to it and find another person and say nowage, friend, four times to claim it from disappearing or being cursed by it. Then you could take it or give it or move it somewhere where no one else would find it and leave it in peace. Oh, and you have to hold on to the other person, like grab their shirt or sleeve or hand on their shoulder. You aren't addressing the person, so you don't have to look at them. Look at the desert or sky or mountains or ground. Who you are addressing is whatever it is that is around the place or attached to objects, say human or animal or other spirit. Fairly mundane, but it scared the hell out of me in the moment. Walking in a dark, damp spruce forest. Hear a rustling near me. See what turned out to be a squirrel king, consisting of five squirrels tangled together. I freaked out thinking it was some sort of pagan warning to leave the woods. Sneak into a state park at night, walking a trail that leads to an abandoned war bunker. Hear a voice. Three figures in black robes approaching. Nearly piss my pants in fear. 
It was three Goths who had been in the bunker smoking weed, out exploring public land in search of a place to shoot targets. See a trail ahead that veers off in a more desirable direction. Get on trail. Notice there's some unusual trash in the thickets off trail. Decide to take a look. See a filthy old mattress with a large rib cage and full vertebra laid out on it. Ran my ass off and never looked back. Happened about three hours ago. I live in Australia. I get into fly fishing and have been going every weekend since I started. I live in Canberra, so I do a lot of fishing in the Brindabella Ranges just outside of town or up in the snowy mountains. Go fishing this Saturday. Go to a real tiny creek as there's been a lot of rain and it'll be having a good run through. Might bring some bigger fish down from the holes up in the mountains no one gets to. Fish one spot, no luck, so head to another. Wrap up for the day and start to hike back to trail head where I park my car. Walk through trees and feel my net hook up to branch and disconnect the magnetic holder. Spin around and no net on ground or visible. I spend the next hour retracing my steps from car to river and back multiple times, eventually giving up, believing the net is lost. Go buy a new net because I'm going fishing Sunday. Be bummed because they don't have the Orvis one I liked in stock. Buy another one, but sorely want my Orvis back. Go fishing in a new spot with a mate. Have the best day on the water ever. Fish on fly, constantly, just yelling, whooping and hollering like chimps. Go home with a huge smile on my face, forget about net. Wake up Monday, go back to work after X maze and nigh break. The boss is a mad keen fisherman and hunter too. Tell him the story and decide I'm going to go back to the spot and look again. Get to spot, start to hike down the access road, get into where I decided to jump off the trail when I was there last. There in plain sight is my net sitting at a weird angle, hanging off a long, thin sapling with no real branches on it, just sort of growing up to a point with no leaves or branches. The sapling is nowhere near where I walked through there, but clearly in view of where I walked down to the river. Walk up to the unhook net. Realize that sapling is through the hole in the net and speared through the middle of the solid net loop dawns on me. Sapling is seven feet high. I'm five foot seven on a good day. There is no possible way my net got impaled on this sapling when it was hanging off my back. Snap sapling and grab net as I couldn't lift it high enough to get it off sapling. Half jokingly yell out thanks for bringing it back. Suddenly loud heavy bipedal footsteps run off away from me. I yell out I'm leaving now Thanks again. Head quickly back to trail and get out of dodge. Yell over my shoulder, I'll leave something for you at the trailhead. Get to the car, grab a tub of pistachios I had in my car from Sunday and pour them out on the stump at trailhead. Get in the car and dip. Did Yowie steal my net and then give it back? Between feeling it get caught up and pull off its magnet and then it not being there and then finding it impaled on a stripped down sapling two feet taller than me, on a random section, no one would have a reason to walk through. I think it did. I remember mushroom hunting as a kid with my mom. We were always talking to the forest, asking it to give us mushrooms and thanking it for them. The forest would sometimes tell us that we are not welcome and ask us to leave, and we always did. This would usually happen if we left one of our knives unholstered for too long, and he got angry, even when there were still plenty of shrooms around. We would walk away passing a clearing, road or ditch, until the mood changed greet the new forest and proceed with hunting. I asked her about it many years later and she said it was just me making up stories, but I distinctly remember her talking with them too. I felt pretty spooked a few times before but it was mostly pretty benign stuff like being startled by raccoons fighting. The most frightened I've ever been was one time I got sleep paralysis while camping once. I had been having trouble getting sleepy that night and I usually don't sleep very well when camping anyway. So I decided to try taking some melatonin once everybody started turning in. Melatonin usually gives me some pretty vivid dreams, but it isn't anything downright scary, though they can often have a strange unsettling or anxious feeling to them. Anyway, at some point after rolling around in my sleep for a few hours, I ended up on my back, 
which is unusual for me because I'm a side sleeper and usually struggle to fall asleep on my back. I remember waking up at one point in the night and feeling on edge about something. I chalked it up to just first night jitters and laid there waiting to fall back asleep. I think I must have drifted off a bit because suddenly I was fully awake and hyper aware of something hovering over me in my tent. It felt whatever it was was sitting on my chest with its face inches above mine. I couldn't really see it, as it was entirely black and seemed like a shadow given form. But I had the distinct impression of claws and exposed teeth. It didn't make any sound and I couldn't feel anything different about the air. But it's like I could sense it breathing directly in my face. I couldn't move, of course, and I don't remember it doing anything or how the experience ended. But I suddenly found myself alone and able to move again. I don't think it was really a dream because I distinctly remembered being able to see the roof of my tent behind it. I laid there awake for a while until I heard one of my friends get up to pee, and I got up with them. I stayed up until around dawn, and then dozed off for another hour or so. Screw melatonin. A couple days ago, I was doing some trail running with my friend. We initially were running on this fairly interesting road. It was quiet, not many cars, a sidewalk, and many office buildings and facilities on the sides. There were zero cars in any of the parking lots, and we didn't see anyone besides ourselves on the sidewalks or even anyone in the buildings. Eventually, since I'm using Strava, I take a glance at the running map and notice a trail entrance. Trails and the like often appear as dotted lines on Strava, close to where we were running. We start going down the trail and everything is fairly normal at first, and it's generally very well maintained and beautiful. Halfway through running on the trail, I see what looks to be two car axles on the ground with a rusty piece of metal besides them. Turns out it was an entire frame buried in the ground. For some background, there's an abandoned junkyard in the woods not too far away from the trail we were running on, so I wasn't surprised. By the end of the trail, we're behind some office building, but there's a large sign with the company name that says something along the lines of, this is private property and anyone besides guests and employees are not allowed, along with a message that the property had video surveillance. There's a rickety old wooden staircase behind the sign, and neither of us want to go all the way back, so we just ignored the sign and walked up the stairs. In front of us were two ways we could exit the property, but the right side had cameras. To avoid them, we ran past the left side of the building. When I glanced at the windows, I could see that there was literally nothing inside. No furniture, people, not even boxes. Just some lights. Once we ran past the gate, we found ourselves in another office park. On the right side was a small playground and a paved path leading to another road, and we exited through that way. Pick-related is the office park. The whole time we were both talking about how weird it felt, etc. Anyways, we ended up back on the same road we came from, and there were tons of playgrounds and even a small cafe, all empty. I've driven down this road tons of times before, and it's not super big and is a little more than half a mile. The buildings are always empty, and I've never seen anyone actually there besides people driving on the road. If it helps, a ton of these buildings belong to companies with federal government contracts and ties to the Department of Defense. Pick related is one of the playgrounds. Once I was stealth camping and tried to sleep, couldn't open the tent and went out into the blackness of the night, turned flashlight on, pointed to the trees distant around five meters from me, and I swear for everything in my life. I saw a figure moving slowly and very cautious to the left. The bush was super dense. I don't know if it was a deer, but a deer would not get close to a human scent and looked like a bipedal. It moved so nicely and didn't break twigs, nothing. This freaks me out until this day. There were no trails on that side, just dense bush. It was the most miserable night of my life. I couldn't sleep and endured the whole night with my machete in my hand feeling absolute terror. I had many seasons outside under my belt and after that I let this activity begin. I don't know what that was nor how long it was watching me. I don't like to remember that. Be a freshman in college in the middle of nowhere Montana. Go out archery hunting, not much else to do. Drive for about two hours down this valley even further in the middle of nowhere. No houses, no cars, nobody else around. Hike up a little fingerling ridge about 3 p.m. and sit. Plenty of old tippy rings on the hike up. I look at them and think, that's cool, and then keep walking. 
7 p.m., been sitting for hours. Nothing. Woods are dead silent. See a little 4x4 four four buck on the way out. Try to stalk him. He runs off. 8 p.m. now. The sun is setting. Walking down the ridge in the dark when I hear a strange sound like singing. Start looking around, scratching my head, thinking WTF. Look across to the other ridge, probably a quarter of a mile west. See what looks like a fire, smoke and all. It's a 90 degree day in September, a really dry year, and burn restrictions are still in place. Look at it through my binos. Sure enough, it's a decent sized campfire. Keep looking around it. There's one guy, barely illuminated, but doing some kind of dance. Something doesn't seem right about this guy. He seems brighter than anything else around. I don't know how else to describe it. He grows brighter as the sun rapidly fades. Something definitely isn't right. I've watched him for 20 minutes and now it is pitch black outside. Turn on my headlamp and nope out of there. As soon as I do the singing and dancing stops. This guy and the fire just vanish into what looks like some kind big cloud of luminescent smoke. Nope, 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 nope. Basically run back to the truck in the pitch black darkness. Turn the ignition switch and haul ass out of the valley. I turn on the radio thinking it might help me relax. What the hell? I flip through channels and it's just the same kind of singing that guy was doing. After about 10 minutes this stops and I finally get the radio back. The next week I'm hanging out with a few friends at the dorms. One of the guys is a bit older and is actually doing an internship with the Bureau of Land Management. Ask him if he's ever been up XYZ Creek down in XYZ Valley. Don't tell him anything about what I saw. He'd think I'm nuts. No way, my boss says there's a bunch of weird shit down there. Ask him to elaborate. He goes on about how people got murdered out there during the gold rush in the 1860s and the Indian Wars after that. He also says there's even an Indian gravesite by a bunch of old tippy rings the Bureau of Land Management doesn't talk about because they don't want people to disturb it. Immediately realize what happened. Never go back there again. Be me when I lived in my hometown. Hear rumors of abandoned factory that's dangerous and shouldn't be explored plus haunted. 16-year-old me eats that up. Hike about a mile through these shrubs since there's barely a trail there. Get to an open area in the woods where a big ass building just sits there. The place must have been used by addicts because empty dime bags and syringes are on the floor. Get to where the center tower is. Look up since it's hollow inside. See noose swinging back and forth. Something drops from the second floor by a staircase down the hall. Run like hell out of there. Look down once in the car to see that I'm bleeding and cut in like three spots. Did some research and found that it was an old chemical factory that got shut down in the 1910s. Even after all this time, I'm terrified to go back whenever I visit that town. Be solo night hunting at Burkhead Wilderness Zone, North Carolina. Mostly farmland surrounding a pretty boring forest. I've been there in the day and it was nothing special. Before the government bought it was a plantation. Grab my night vision setup, a relatively cheap Gen 3 monocular in R15. Talk to my buddies on the way up to calm my nerves, losing the call every once in a while. I'm kind of afraid of the dark and doing this to get over it. Get to Burkhead and walk past creepy plantation house and down the trail past old barns. Try to aim down my R15 with my red dot is a lot harder to aim passively than it was in my apartment. So I can't really do any serious hunting but I decided I could get a good night hike in and not waste my one day I could do this. The forest is dark and I mean really dark. Even with my night vision I can barely see 30 feet in front of me since there are lots of clouds and a thick canopy. Hear the coyotes I was trying to hunt. They sound like people. Yow. Creepy and I can't see any of them in the fields around the trails. Go deeper in the forest. I feel naked and this feels worse than when I got lost in the forest after hunting with just a flashlight. Night vision has a five minute timer. Turns off and I do my periodic scramble to turn it back on. Spongy button. I click it twice then finally get it on. The tube comes back on and through the static I see the shine of eyes in the distance. I am kinda intrigued by actually seeing an animal with my night vision with this low of visibility. I have no infrared illuminator to check out the animal since I didn't think I would need it. I am a supreme dumbass and spooked. The spooky feeling the forest is giving me is justified seeing those eyes. Walk back back to my car scanning around me frantically. R15 is switched off safely. I am expecting I can point shoot whatever comes towards me. I have no ear protection since it doesn't fit well on my skull crusher. The eyes follows me a half a mile back to the car close. The ground scanning frantically intensifies. Looks around me and then back to the eye. 
one hand on the reset button, another on the pistol grip of my rifle. Hee 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 Right behind me. Turn around with a rifle in both hands. Night vision turns off before I can turn back around towards my eyes. Drop the rifle press button on night vision. 25-year-old tube springs to life to reveal an ugly dog with more eyes behind him. Oh shit moment. I bring my rifle up and point shoot. A muzzle flash and my ears are ringing as I let off a few shots. Hot gas in my face also don't know why, but the smell of gunpowder is very strong. Book it back to my car and throw the R-15 in the passenger seat and drive out. Later park in a church parking lot and unload it and put it in my trunk to not seem like a mass shooter in full Swiss camo. Hell of a first time out. That forest was the most spooky I have ever hiked in till this day. This is how people end up being shot at night in the woods. Idiots like you see a set of eyes and think it's a goddamn demon. I'm staying in a national forest type of place, super remote. Trees as far as you can see, loads of birds singing in the canopy, and a really picturesque spot. In front of where I'm staying, there is a grass clearing with thick forest surrounding it, and there is a small animal trail at the end of the clearing going into the forest. I want to explore a bit and see what's down there. It's late afternoon, the sun's going down soon, so I head off. After a short while, there is a crash from some animal being spooked off to my right. I can't see what it was. Most likely a large antelope running away. Keep heading down the trail. It's quite overgrown in places, and after a bit of walking, I spot a vertebrae and a few other bones scattered on the trail. I duck under some branches blocking the trail and continue exploring, enjoying the forest vibes, but also thinking to myself the only predator which is large enough to have made the kill would be a leopard. They are very rare, and I'm not convinced, but kind of glance into the thick forest on the right, wondering what I spooked earlier. I decided to properly examine the ground for animal tracks, and almost immediately I found a fresh cat print, got that dreadful feeling in my stomach, and really looked hard into the branches and trees, but obviously couldn't see anything. Kept going for another 15 minutes before the trail got super overgrown and I turned, was kind of on edge and checking behind me often. On the way back, I stopped at the spot where the bones were. I looked around and just off the trail, there were two small caves, dens and some cat feces. I decided to throw a stone into one of them to check if anything was inside. It was empty and headed back before it got dark. Anyways, I really wanted to see the leopard, and early the next morning I went down the trail once again, this time with the friend I was staying with, we walked super stealthily down the trail, and just past where the, the bones and den was, we saw the leopard sunning itself on a branch for less than a second before it saw us and bolted into the forest. There were no jokes less than seven yards away from us, very surreal, it was a small female maybe 40 or 50 pounds, they are very rare to see in the flesh. The scientists who research them almost never see them unless they trap the leopard to put on a radio collar and take blood. Besides that, they are just seen on motion cameras. Pick is of the forest. Anyone else hiking through extremely thick forest and then suddenly you pop out into a huge, perfectly round clearing, like an oasis. I did once. A friend and I got separated from the group and we stubbornly decided to just keep walking it was so dense we literally had to pull ourselves through the vines and bushes. And then pop. We found ourselves in what we thought was a fairy tale. Perfectly sunny and bright. Literally there was a perfect cottage with a chimney and a garden and perfectly cut grass. Probably a one kilometer circle with the house at the center. We saw a driveway but couldn't actually see any way out. It just led into the same dense wall of bush that was on all sides. We could tell the place was inhabited because there was smoke coming out of the chimney and we felt so uneasy that after a couple minutes of sitting on the edge of this circle and looking around we decided to get out of there. So we turned around and crawled back through this small hole we had made in the vines and bushes and as soon as we popped back into the forest it was dark again. We managed to walk back the way we felt like we came from and we made it back to the group. Later when I got home I went onto Google Maps and searched for that location. I knew where to look because I had scouted the trail on Google Earth before going. But there was nothing there. I spent hours looking for it in all directions from the hiking trail starting point. And I couldn't see anything. No houses anywhere near the area. I should have been able to see it from the satellite pictures. It was a huge circle clearing in the middle of thick forest. I don't know, maybe it's not that interesting. But it's always something that creeped me out even though there wasn't really anything creepy about it. I had a similar experience while wandering around in the woods near Mansfield, Ohio. 
town has some spoopy prisons and a history of Indian wars. Was strolling along in the woods one day and found a mansion sitting in the middle of nowhere, looking nice. I backed away and asked my buddy's family who had lived in the town all their lives what the deal was with the house, and they didn't know what I was talking about. Took my bro W me a few days later, and when we finally found it, it was abandoned and rotting. Smelled like a million decomposing vegetables. Something stalked us all the way back to the car and I never went back, and had a bunch of bad luck or weird shit happen until I moved away shortly after. Same thing happened when I was a teenager and stole my mom's car to joyride with friends, except the house was dilapidated and full of trash. When I went back in the daytime, it was a normal house. Do you realize that in many areas, Google Earth imagery is updated once in a decade, and in areas like forests, even less often? Yes, but I'm looking on Bing Maps now. 100,000 times better than Google Maps. And there is nothing. I know exactly where it was, and I can't see anything. Even if the whole thing was demolished, there would still be the shape cut into the woods. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I have come across multiple abandoned buildings, but I have never seen one with a body hanging down in one. I have this thing that I'm deathly afraid of scary movies, and I cannot play any games that have any monsters in it, not even Duke Nukem 3D or Doom. But IRL, if I find some abandoned building in the middle of nowhere, I immediately go to sleep there. I imagine there are ghosts all around me, and I talk to them calmly, and when I go to sleep I tell them to do their worst. Some people cannot go out because they are scared of bears, but I always do the same thing when I go to sleep that I say, come get me bears. Funny thing is, I have never gotten rid of my aversion for horror games and movies, even though I enjoy them so much in real life. I did once. I was exploring an abandoned building on the outskirts of town with a friend. We found his mom hanging on the back of the entryway door. She had hardcore addiction issues. Thankfully, I was so autistic that I had no empathy or else that would have been an excruciatingly painful experience. I'm sure for him it was terrible, though I was unable to feel those kinds of things then. Guess it's time to share. Be me, 17, 2013. In film class with my girlfriend and her friend, we always grouped up together. Her friend had a knack for finding abandoned houses around the area to shoot our movies in go to this one spot she finds. Small house in the middle of nowhere, up a winding road into the woods. Shoot our film, time to be dumbass teenagers. Find a door that leads to a basement. Very dark, no windows, small room with odd furniture. Cabinets lining the walls, table in the middle, dust and papers everywhere. My girlfriend opens the cabinet and screams, WTF, what's wrong? We went over to where she was kneeling down. The cabinet had three or four jars with fetuses in them. We realize the table in the center is an operating table. We look at the papers laying everywhere. It's all patient info and other medical docs, I think. Kind of freaked out, but we think it's badass being edgy teenagers and all. Take some pics and GTFO. Time skip to next semester. New project. Her friend says we should use the fetus house. We all agree. Our curiosity is killing us. We are talking about it all the way there, psyching ourselves up, hoping to find out more about the place. Get there, skip the film project, go right to the basement, WTF. All the papers, jars, and other shit is gone. Everything wiped down, no more dust. We sort of stand there looking around as it slowly starts to hit us. This place was not completely abandoned. Someone regularly checked up on it and probably saw some of the papers and dust disturbed. Skedaddle out of there. Get back to the car and we don't say a word the entire ride home. We didn't tell anyone this happened. We were too freaked out about it. Lost the pics years ago when my phone got totally wrecked. Rip Windows phone. Years later, I was back home visiting and I became obsessed with refinding the fetus house. After a week of combing up and down the area, I think I found where it used to be, but the entire area got bulldozed for new houses. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time.
Remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos. There's also a Rumble archive as a backup.